Hey everybody, Nick here from Jacob's Acres. So in this video, I'm gonna be building a dining table from reclaimed barn wood. So that was just a few photos of the barn itself, but these are the boards that I selected. Some of them were warped and twisted and cupped, so I had to use the track saw to get a nice straight reference line. And then I went over and made a straight cut with the table saw to get everything nice and square. I also ran them through the planer. I got them flat on the bottom side, and then I flipped the boards and got them skip planed, which left a lot of that good saw marks and character. So here I have all the boards orientated and laid out how I want them, and then I went ahead and glued them up. The next step is to do the breadboard ends. So I used the track saw to make a series of cuts that would then allow me to just chisel away the material a bit easier. So with this being my first table, uh, I really wanted to do it right. And the traditional and correct way to do breadboard ends is with mortise and tenon joinery. So here I'm creating the tenon on the tabletop, which is going to slip into the mortise slot inside the breadboard. So I roughed most of the material off with the chisel, but then I went in with a router and I smoothed everything out on both sides. At work, at a machine shop, I put the breadboard end into a milling machine and I cut the slot using an end mill. Off camera, I drilled and slotted all the holes for the pegs to be draw bored. What draw boring does is you have two holes that are offset and it pulls the breadboard in tight to the tabletop. Only that center pin is gonna get glued. All the others on the right and left side of the center pin actually go, they get pounded in dry and you only glue the tops of the pins as you drive them all the way through. This allows the tabletop to expand and contract over the seasons. And here, of course, I'm adding sawdust to the glue. That's just gonna close up any small gaps and uh, little spots that chipped out when I drilled the holes. So here I've added wood filler. It, what this does is it does two things. It fills all the holes uh, and it fills the saw marks. It smooths the table out, but it also lets a lot of those saw marks pop once the finish is on. Now it dries gray, but as you can see here, now that it's sanded down, it really highlights those saw marks. And it's really gonna pop once I put this finish on and the finish is dry. So here I'm adding a product from Czar. It's a oil-based poly. It's a matte finish. Uh, I've never used a poly like this before, but I was very, very impressed with it. So here I'm adding finish to my favorite part of the table. This board had some kind of crotch figure, as well as some really nice saw marks. And when I added that finish to it, it just really made that character pop. So this is after the first coat. I ultimately did about three coats total and I did a light buffing in between with red scotch bright. But you'll see here in a second, once this tabletop dries, it really, really, really looks nice. So here it is. You can see that nice matte finish just has a very low sheen. It's not very glossy, but it's just nice and smooth. So 
So the client was really looking for an industrial look and I thought the best option for that would be these pipe legs. I just got these at Home Depot, they're inch and a half. All the fittings uh, were available locally. I decided I wanted the tabletop to be removable from the base, so here I'm drilling for threaded inserts. The table was very, very heavy, so making it easy to disassemble was very necessary. Off camera, I decided to add some C channel. So the breadboard ends are going to keep the table pretty flat. It was probably all that was necessary, but I had the C channel and I wanted to add it just as extra insurance. So as well as the dining table, I also made a matching bench to go along with it. It's about six foot long and about 20 inches wide. I used the same barn wood source, uh, did the same finish, same whole process. I used the wood filler and I used the industrial pipe legs as well. So not much footage on that, but I did the breadboard ends the same way as the table. Uh, I actually used no glue in this one for the breadboard ends, but here is the finished product. And along with the bench, I also made a couple of shelves out of these sycamore boards. These also came from the barn. You can see the saw marks on the front face I left. All right, and here's the table all loaded up and ready to head to the client's house. A few months later, I finished up the bench and got that delivered, and she was very, very satisfied with it. I really appreciate her trusting me to build the table and to pay me what she did. I learned a lot, and it was so worthwhile. I'm really excited to make the next one, and I'm really excited to make another video. I know this one wasn't really the best, but I had a lot of fun doing it, and I look forward to the next one. So guys, I appreciate you watching. I hope you subscribe. And until next time, I'll see you later.